Terrariums, the opportunity to build an entire world that fits in the palm of your hands. Let's make one together. Welcome to Growing Joy with Maria, plant friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend. And today, in partnership with Espoma Organic, we are going to be making terrariums, little worlds, little miniature worlds that we can escape into when life gets too hard. That's what I love about terrariums. And I love that you can make anything into a terrarium, really. You can make a mason jar into a terrarium. You can make a thrifted item like this. I got this at the thrift store for $2. My sister-in-law is a teacher in Boston. She's amazing. And she has young kids in her classroom. And so I thought it would be really fun to make a closed terrarium for her classroom so the kids aren't like getting their hands in the dirt with a really fun, whimsical kind of setting scenario. So my friend Joe, who is Mr. D times three on Instagram, he talks about how he used to have a petting cactus for his kids in his classroom. And if the kids were getting anxious or tense, he used the petting cactus as a way to help them regulate their nervous systems. So I thought making some sort of really fun, whimsical scene in a terrarium for the classroom for her might be nice for her to maybe, you know, instead of having a timeout, you have to go have a timeout with Mr. Gnome and kind of calm down. But the beauty of terrariums is we're going to build a, a full world that these kids can escape into, which is why I think terrariums are such great gifts for teachers. Okay, so let's talk tools. What do you need to make a terrarium? We're going to go from basics and then some extra things that, as I've made multiple, realized are so necessary to help really create a styling, you know, to really be able to style within, within your glass. So what you definitely need is layer of drainage, layer of potting mix, and a couple of plants at its simplest, right? So this terrarium, which is a more simple terrarium, has the drainage, the potting mix, the plants in it. There's no like crazy setup we're going to make. Then you can add decorative moss on top. You could add sand. Some people put like crushed crystals on top. We're going to be using Espoma Organic, the sponsor of today's episode. They have horticultural charcoal that's really important, putting in your drainage layer to keep the water and soil and terrarium fresh and clean, and then standard potting mix. Make sure that you use actual potting mix that comes in a bag. Don't go outside and get dirt from your lawn and try and put that in your terrarium. If it's going to hold water too much and your plants are going to rot and you're going to be really sad. So in addition to what you're putting at the bottom of the terrarium and the plants inside, you also need some tools. This is where I have found investing in some tools really helps plant friends. I think this whole kit that I bought was like maybe $15 at Michael's. You're going to want long tweezers, okay? I bought these as a set of three, but I really love these tweezers. They're like kind of reverse and they let you like go in and pick up a little mushroom. It's very important to have little baby mushrooms in your terrariums. So they let you have a lot of precision. And then this is my handy dandy tamper. That's what I've decided to call it. Basically, it's anything that has a flat edge that you can go into the terrarium and go like this because you're going to realize you have very limited mobility with your hands. So you need some form of tamper. You can buy a fancy one or you can stick a fork in a wine cork the way I do. Some tweezers. Scissors in case you need to prune roots. Always use snippers that are specific for your plants and not your kitchen shears. With plant selection, you want to make sure that you're selecting plants that like humidity because you're essentially creating a closed humid environment in here. That's why any humidity loving plants, this is where these plants shine. So I'm super lucky. My local garden center, Adams Fairy Crew Farm, shout out to you guys. They have a terrarium section in their garden center. So they have pallets of these liners full of terrarium terrarium plants. And I went in there, I bought essentially like a full liner to make all of these terrariums for you guys. And they basically give like this plant, it has a stamp of approval for a terrarium, right? If you're lucky enough to have a garden center like that, that's where you should go. You're always going to want really tiny pots. You want to find like the tiniest plants you can to put in these terrariums. You're going to realize how little space there is. But in general, if you don't have a garden center that has that isolated, you're going to want to look for high humidity loving plants. Nerve plants are great for this. <laughs> Some varieties of ficus do great. Peperomia do amazing in in terrariums. This freaky purple plant does great in terrariums. I'm forgetting the name, but we'll put it up there. A lot of these like creepy crawling little plants, these are great because they'll grow kind of in circles around the pot and maybe even crawl up the sides. And then also the one that we're going to actually be using in this gnome setup, this tiny little polka dot begonia. I freaking love this plant. I'm so excited that I get to put this in hers. So 
we've got our little gnome catching some shade under the sunflower. I want to put his back almost up to the begonia like this. We're going to have a little patch of moss, I think, in the front where we're going to stick a bunch of these little really cute. These were beads. I got these in the beading sections of section of Michael's. But I have a vision to like stick beads of the, the mushroom beads into the moss. And then I also found this really cute little like butterfly moment. So I think we're going to have the butterflies flying out of the moss. And then we have a few more plants that I want to put in here. So I was thinking to kind of connect the pink begonia and the purple, we'll have these guys next to each other. And then this will kind of crawl over the moss and we'll have a beautiful scene. So now that that's our plan, I highly suggest kind of sketching it out before you do it. Because once you start planting in this terrarium, it's going to be harder to move stuff around. So now that we know that, let's start building our drainage layer. All right, so let's build some drainage. So we've got our layer of horticultural charcoal and LECA, and now we're gonna go in and put potting mix in the bottom. The potting mix is gonna be the bed where the roots are. So I wanna make at least a good, this is where I get messy plant friends, okay? I'm not a tidy plant tuber content creator. It's fun to be messy. It's fun to get your hands dirty. That's the point of doing crafts like this, right? So we're going to have, <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of the soil on the side. I'm going to lay the base foundation for the soil. And then I'm going to trust that I'm going to need more soil on top after we place the plants. So now I want to take all the plants that I'm using out of their pots and shake them free of all excess soil. So ideally, it's just kind of the roots and a little bit of, of the existing potting mix in here because we want to be able to nestle these plants kind of as deeply into the terrarium as possible. Like there's not a lot of room to like put a whole pot like this in a short terrarium like this, if that makes sense. So we want to just have kind of the root ball and then the existing roots. So we've got my begonia here. Then we're going with... Whoops. Going in with this plant. We're going to shake that free. And don't be afraid if you break some of the roots. Roots were made to be broken. Roots get broken in nature all the time. It's okay. Your plants are resilient. They're going to be great. They know exactly what to do when their roots get broken. I think these are going to look so pretty together. And then where was that green guy I wanted? Okay. Our next, ooh, this guy is pretty pot bound. So this guy's pretty pot bound. It's pot bound when you see the roots start growing in line with the pot. This is a very hardy plant. So we're gonna shake the pot boundness out of the roots. If you don't shake this up, the roots will still keep growing in that pattern and it's not good. So you wanna shake this out. So now I've got my three plants. I'm gonna go in and kind of mark out what we're working with. So I've got my base layer. I know that I want to put him. I'm going to hold you by your little cutie gnome hat, little friend. We're going to put him here. And then I know that I want, I'm going to take him out, but I want to like mark this out first and then we'll put him back in. So I want him like leaning up against this begonia. And then after that, I want this guy kind of like filling that out. We're going to need to make a deeper hole for him. Actually, I can separate this. We're just going to pinch. I'm going to make a game time decision, guys, and I'm actually going to use this plant instead because that plant was just a little too tall. So we're going to swap out for this plant. It still has that kind of pink to purple gradient, which will look really pretty when we plant him up in the moss. Beautiful. He looks so cute. Much better. So then we're going to have him here. And then we're going to have him at the bottom of the pot. And because he's already trailing like this, we're going to let these little climbers like trail along the side. And it'll be so pretty because they'll eventually crawl behind him, which will be so sweet. I love this. Okay. So now that I know where these plants are going, I'm going to take him out. And this is where we get to work. So first up, I'm going to take my tamper, my hi-fi, very fancy tamper, and I'm going to make a little hole. I'm going to put the begonia in the hole and leave it. Then I'm going to make a little hole for the second plant. 
I'm going to pop him in. And then rinse and repeat one more hole. And then pop him in. And then to support making sure that these plants are really well rooted, we're going to go in with another layer of soil. And then we'll go put the gnome down. Get in there. And this is where having tweezers and a tamper is really helpful. So I'm going to use the tweezers to hold the plant. And then I'm going to use the tamper to kind of like knock it exactly where I want it to go. So you can kind of move it around, get it exactly how you want. And then we go in with soil. I'm going to put the soil in the middle and then just kind of shimmy it through because I think trying to get the soil on the side of the of the terrarium is going to be too difficult, but I want to be very generous because I want these roots to establish really comfortably. And you're going to shoot for the soil reaching the top line that, um, you want the soil to match the line that it was in the planter. So you have to kind of eyeball that. And that's why having the tweezer and the tamper is really important. <laughs> So I kind of want this plant to look like it's kind of effortlessly coming out of that one. Come on. Come on, little cutie. And we're going to go in here. Get like that. Yeah, there we go. And tamp down. And this is where we'll also water everything. It's very important to water your soil the first time you plant up your terrarium because it's the watering that is going to help the soil settle. So we're gonna give it a good water so it settles before I throw my little gnomey friend in there. I'm gonna go and just kind of manually move this begonia over a little bit. I want them to seem a little bit more connected. And now, gonna, when you're watering a terrarium too, like say you get soil on the side of it, you can kind of water the side of the terrarium as a way to like clean it. You want to be very careful with you are watering the terrarium, though, because the water, it, it doesn't have anywhere to go. So you can see the water is at the bottom of the pot. The soil's dry, so it's going to absorb slowly. Um, so I'm not worried about it, but you have to be very careful with open terrariums how much you water. So I want my little gnomey boy to be leaning up next to the begonia. I think this is the perfect place to put him. Look how cute that looks. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. Um, you comfortable in there, little guy? Okay. Then, where are my little butterflies? I love the idea that he's sitting with the butterflies and like in dreamland. I want the kids to be able to enter dreamland. So now I'm going to take these butterflies and pat them in. And then I think I want to fill a little, I just love how like vibrant this green moss is. I think it's going to look so pretty. Also, these butterflies are coming out of moss, so I think it'll just like look more natural if I put a little bit of moss in. So I'm going to prepare just a little thin layer of moss. You don't want too much. You don't want to encourage rot. You don't want to encourage any form of fungus growing. And I'm going to use my little tweezers and pop it in. Then I'm going to use my tamper and tamp it down. Tweezers. I love these tweezers. These tweezers make me feel like a chef. And then a little bit more. And then the tamper is where, that's really where this thing, Hulk, this comes into play. So I'm just going to turn him away from you for a quick minute while I take a look. I think this looks unbelievably adorable. I'm going to pull the moss in through the other side of the terrarium and I think this is going to be the most magical world that these kids can escape into in the middle of their workday when they need a break. And that's why. You can also like hold a plant so when you're tamping it doesn't knock the plant over. Last but not least we're putting my butterflies and then I found, these were literally jewelry beads that I found at Michael's as mushrooms. I'm going through a real mushroom phase right now. I think mushrooms are the coolest things. We have a whole mushroom mini series on the podcast, on the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, if you're interested in learning about mushrooms. 
I'm going to take a few mushrooms and oh my God, that looks so cute. <laughs> I'm going to nestle, oopsies, I'm going to nestle them in the moss. This looks adorable. And I love that like she could say, you know, she can go to her students and say, count how many mushrooms there are or how many butterflies can you find? This will be a fun, fun experience for her kids. Now, we're done with this terrarium. I'm going to close this. And now through evaporation, uh, it, it is essentially kind of going to water itself. Some people will say that you don't have to open this glass. I don't advise that because you're going to have mold. You're going to have fungus that might pop up. So I suggest that if you have a closed terrarium, you do something called burping. Burping is for an hour. I'm going to tell Maggie, my sister-in-law, okay, so here's how you do this. You know, on your lunch break, once a week, you're going to take this off. You're going to give it an hour. It's going to cycle through some new air and you can put it off. And if in a closed terrarium, you ever see like any um, moss that's totally normal, you can just tamp it down. And then you just know that you need to burp your terrarium a little bit more. I'm so excited to give this to my sister-in-law. I think it came out so cute. I'm going to give her instructions to burp it. She's never going to need to water it again. It's going to be amazing. I hope her kids love it. Let me know if you liked this video. Let me know if you're going to make a terrarium of your own and what cool, you know, whimsical scenario you're going to build out and what plants you're going to choose. I'm dying to know. So DM me pictures on social media at Growing Joy with Maria. Special thanks again to Espoma Organic, the sponsor of this video. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy.